So Ramanuja was a great sage, um, one of the um, more evolved students that came out of the South Indian tradition of the yoga tradition I studied in uh, with teachers from that tradition in India with people like TKB Desikachar and then I never met him but his father was a man called Krishnamacharya who had about seven degrees in every different school of Indian wisdom from Ayurveda to the, the, the Indian science of medicine to um, astrology to yoga to philosophy Vedic philosophy he was a very profound being but uh, I want to just talk briefly about Ramanuja. So Ram Ramanuja was this character who was preternaturally gifted and quite wise. And you could compare him in a sense to Socrates um, or Jesus Christ, because anyone like that, that comes along and sees through the folly of the human mind and is then put in a situation where they, they witness it and they can't compromise on their integrity then they're going to be threatened by the world and that's what happened to Socrates it's what happened to Christ it's what happened to Ramanuja and last night I was listening to a talk by Krishnamurti and I remember at 18 just you know being a bird watcher and being fascinated with the beauty of and the mystery of evolution and being a sort of arch devotee of the likes of Ramana um, uh, Richard Dawkins and Stephen Jay Gould and these great minds that came in the field of evolutionary biology and in this talk that Krishnamurti is giving he's saying he's saying look you know what why are we here why are we meeting what what's the purpose of these meetings where I sit and talk and you know what's the value of it and he's saying that you know, these theories of our biologists and the biochemists and, you know, it's, it's not what's going on. At a relative level, we think we are the product of our genes. We think we are the product of our uh, nurtured story. And at a relative level, those things are relatively true. But then you have these great giants of spiritual wisdom who come along and they say, look, something else is going on and i i feel like if you look at all the philosophies of the world except perhaps advaita vedanta in its purest form and the course in miracles you have these creation myths god created the universe and all of that but the course in miracles is quite emphatic and advaita vedanta and the way that ramana mahashi taught it both are emphatic and there are schools of buddhism that align with this but i i, I this is what Krishnamurti was saying. He said, look, the whole physical universe is a creation of thought. And that thought creates endless or seemingly endless physical universes. But then if you want to look into what you are, you have to go beyond the thought. And at the seat of the thought, as Ramana says, is the I thought, I am. Because everything starts from the I am. From the I am comes the sense of you are and they are and we are, and, and all the other possibilities. But once you go to this root thought that I am, then you start to investigate the origin of life, which is, and you have to be careful how you define life. Like, do, do you mean it by biological life, physical life, um, which is, is the realm and the study of physics and biology and chemistry? Or are you looking at metaphysics? So what do we mean by life? And in The Course in Miracles, it's emphatic. It says, like, an illusionary thought, what Krishnamurti would call the idea of becoming, took over the mind. And then with that becoming came all kinds of insecurity. And the mind was born, actually. And then that insecurity looked to attack and defend its position. And it created this miasma of illusions, which is the whole physical universe. Now, if you're, if you're a materialist, if you're someone that's um, stuck in the mind and it's his status and its importance and his, um, his, his reputation and his history and it, his story, then, then you cannot broach what I'm talking about because it's all about me and mine. 
right? And the me and mine creates a, a myth. And there's a lovely book um, called Fantastes, an adult fantasy by the Christian um, mystic fiction writer, uh, George MacDonald. And, and in it, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a very mystical book. But as the man walks through the story of his adventures in the world, he has a shadow that's following him. And every day the shadow gets smaller and smaller. And this is kind of emblematic of the ego of my aspirations, my interests, my passion, my uh, uh, distractions, my aversions, my attachments. All of that starts to shrink in a mind that is becoming conscious of what's really going on. And in The Course in Miracles, the mythology says, look, there was an idea that you could kill God and you created this big bang, this vast unending landscape of, 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 of separated space, this atom, that atom, this particle, um, this bus, this car, this dog, this, and, and, and in this world of separation, you, you found yourself and you thought that was what you were. And it had nothing to do with what you were. And so every time we attack or defend, we repeat this idea that we are the boss and we can kill and control. And once we start to see that this sort of thinking creates nothing but violence, aggression, my flag versus your flag, my ideology versus your ideology, then we start to free ourselves. But the problem is, if we're in this framework of like a spiritual teacher like Ramanuja had, um, and you start to see through the flaws of all these clever arguments and you, you, you don't fold for them anymore, then the teacher wants to kill you. And that's exactly what happened to Ramanuja. He was the brightest student and um, the way he was treated was that, you know, he, uh, the, his teacher didn't like the fact that he was so bright. And so he plotted with his other students a way to kill him. And he got, Ramana had a tip off. It came in dreams and other people told him, but you know, that's what my teacher said when he said, you know, when you're very quiet inside, you realize that there are other forces at work in life. And then you start to trust. And in the Course in Miracles, it says, it takes great learning to come to the realization that, you know, all events, situations, unfoldings and happenings are uh, for the greatest good. And you can think, my God, well, what's the greatest good about the Second World War or, or a rape or someone abusing you? Well, you're going through this process of dropping the illusions of the opposites, good and bad. And you're coming to this place of seeing only the good in others. And is forgiveness an easy journey? No, it's the most difficult thing in the world. You put the Course in Miracles, this blue book in front of people, and if they can get beyond the Christian language and just see the metaphysics in it, you're putting the most difficult challenge in front of them. You're making them look at their victim mind and their victimizer mind. And it's not a pretty picture. And, you know, characters like Ramanuja, characters like Socrates, characters like Jesus Christ, they came into a story where this awareness of what was actually going on dawned in them. And when that happens, you know, one, you see through the illusions, two, a lot of insecurity is dropped and that doesn't mean it does it transfers to others you know you know you can be a great success in the world and an incredible failure spiritually you can be a great success success as a psychotherapist and have no understanding of who you are so this is the irony of the world we live in you know if you're devoted to truth if you're devoted to awakening then you're going to go through numerous dark nights of the soul almost certainly and each time you're sitting against a wall where I, you're looking at this thought that I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm never upset for something for the reason I think. <clears throat> because I identify, I've identified with the body, you know. And if you think about a lovely young mother and she's got a child and there's a birthday party for her child. And she's so happy to celebrate the joy of the birthday. And <clears throat> nothing wrong with that. It's all, all lovely and beautiful. Uh, it's an achievement to get another year so forth and they celebrate the love between the parents and the child and his friends and so forth it's all very nice you know but then <coughs> at a certain level of spiritual maturity you start to see um, I'm not the body 
right? So from our very earliest conditioning, we, we are attaching our joy, which is something authentic, to things outside. But then as the mind goes back, it says, I'm never upset for the reason I think. Something goes wrong, then I cling to this delusional mind. Something goes right, then, then the sane mind comes out. But they're all projections. And so a master of the mind is someone that sees only the light and the shadows have no power over them. But you have to be careful with that because we live in a society where we want the high, the high, the high, right? So people take marijuana, they drink alcohol, they drink coffee. They're constantly pumping themselves to have this high, right? And then romantic love, you see this divine goddess and she looks for this divine masculine in you. And then you have your shadow side. And if you don't intend to the shadow side, your judgments, your flaws, your anxiety, then <clears throat> you build up this animosity between the couple and between in friendships. And so real maturity is about looking at the shadow with the light within you and the shadows start to go away, like in the story of fantasies. But, you know, like the reason I am so inspired with the with Sutra Novum and with this story is because I'm not... I'm not teaching anything complicated. I'm only, te and I'm not teaching to anyone else. I'm reinforcing this awareness, this shift in myself by talking about it. It's selfish with a capital S because there's no me in it, right? It's the sense that I think I'm a body. I think I have a birthday, all of these things. But then Ramana comes along and he says, yeah, why would I celebrate a birthday? It's just another year in the body an identity which is not who I am, right? So the only thing to celebrate really at the deepest level, not that I'm against celebrating birthdays, but it's about the awareness that I am a master of my mind. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I trust in life. I'm not going to complain. Yes, the world is full of corruption. People abuse me and others, but I'm not going to see myself as the uh, the 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 the. the the, the, the product of those stories, right? And that takes enormous uh, detachment, enormous devotion to what's really going on here, right? And you can go to a psychotherapist and they can be really retarded, right? You can see that if you're more evolved. But then you, if you're looking to evolve, is looking for what's the light and the wise and the loving aspect in everyone. No matter how tortured and cruel and insane they seem. And of course, insight says sometimes keep away from this person. Their motives have nothing to do with, with, with sanity, right? And maybe they'll come back to you after they've been through some trials and your friendship can flower or maybe they don't. But your job isn't to fix the world. It's to fix your perception of the world. And that is this profound focus. And you have to recognize that. You have to be so careful with the discussion of this. Like I went into a university which was so stuck in its victim complexes uh, with its psychotherapy and its rigid system of hierarchies, which was one insecurity after another. And no one knew who they were. And the same situation that happened there was the same as what happened to Ro Ramanuja, right? Petty jealousies, my PhD, I'm the teacher, you can't question me. And it's like, well, that's not what truth is about. Truth has no authority um, that it has uh, appointed to do its job. It is the authority. And so the only test of truth is whether you're peaceful, you don't judge, and whether you see yourself as liberated of the idea you're a victim of the world. And if you see others in a victim mind state as victims, then also the truth hasn't dawned upon you. And this is a tremendously challenging thing to master. And that's why the forgiveness uh, focus of the Course in Miracles is to say, I am seeing something that's not there. I'm seeing an illusion, a miasma of the ego. This whole universe is, is, is a deception. And, you know, if you think about all the great art and the science, they come from sitting with the truth of the relative world. But the, the art also comes from uh, sitting with... Um, the truth of the absolute world, right? The great artists are inspired, you know. Inspired means spirit has come inside them. So how do you live in a corrupt, insane, unforgiving, judgmental world with a heart fully open and a mind fully open to love where you forgive the illusions that others are subscribed to and you, you don't judge them for it and you live in your own mind each day grateful 
for this next step that you're taking to seeing beyond the lie that you have been trapped in. And that's the beauty of, 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 of learning the value of forgiveness and coming to gratitude for that. Forgiveness in the sense of seeing through the illusion. Is it easy? It's probably the most difficult thing in the whole universe. It's the only thing that really matters and it's extremely challenging. And of course, when people come who've mastered that, Ramanuja, or, or given their life to that, Christ, Socrates, they're going to be extremely threatening to the status quo that believes in the illusions and is trapped there. Doesn't make any difference in the sense that their value is there because they will not value what is valueless. You know, that's the critical thing. Are you valuing your insecurity or you're valuing the discrimination that can drop this insecurity and see with the eyes of love? That's the only question you have to ask yourself constantly. And if you can ask that question and be devoted to it, then you have um, a path beyond fear and a path beyond deception, a, power, a path beyond self-deception and delusions. And that's the path to take to be happy.